Hey guys, good morning. It's Thursday and today we have a meeting with Sony and we're going to install something new and we have another new toy coming in. So join us for today's episode of Behind the Closed Doors. And I kid you not, this is going to be an interesting one, I think. In all honesty, most of my days are pretty interesting, well at least for me, because I do what I love and that's so much better than just going to an office every day. Think about it. Did you think about it? I think you came to the same conclusion that I did. I just love what I do. So that's way better than working for a boss, going to work and then spending the nights at your hobby. I can do my hobby almost every day. Great. Before I go into our studio, there's one thing I have to address. On May 6th, that was my birthday. I'm now 46 years old. <sighs> sometimes I feel like 60, but sometimes I still feel like 21. And I got so many responses on social media from you guys. So thank you so very much for that. I try to like everything, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much for so many responses. It was absolutely awesome that something like that really makes your day. Okay, so I'm ready to start today, going into the studio and have our meeting with Sony. But first, well, we have to install something for more backups. And as always, they're hard at work at Studio FD. Daisy's actually getting all the Teratool stuff out of the boxes. And then we have to put everything in the computer, in our inventory, and then send it to our dealers and clients. A lot of work, Daisy. You're doing a fine job. So now, everybody needs a little bit of appreciation. Remember that when you work in an office, say something nice to people. And don't always just think that they're paid to do their job, so do it. Be a little bit nice, like any week here. She's cleaning my desk. Okay. You're doing a great job, Anna Week. Thank you so very much. It's very nice of you to come in today. Oh, yeah. Of course, you expect them to be nice in return, but yeah, that's okay. That wasn't planned, by the way. So, thank you so very much, Anna Week. Now, I actually thought she did it all for me, but she now just con confessed it's for a big meeting with Sony. So, yeah. You can't have everything. Okay, but first up, we have to install a second Drobo 5C. Now, recently we already switched for all our photography to the Drobo 5C from our external towers. And, well, great unit, so we actually decided to get a second one for our video work. Now, how does it work with us? We have one DAS system that's direct attached storage. That means that it's directly connected to the computer. And those are the two Drobo 5Cs. And we have one NAS backup system, and NAS means network attached storage, and those are the Synologies. Now the cool thing is, both those systems run on a system called RAID. And RAID means you use several hard drives to create one big volume. And the cool thing about that is, if you need to expand that volume, you just take out one of the drives, put in a bigger one, and it will rebuild itself, and you don't have to think about it. Another cool thing is, if one of those drives fail, you just take out the defective drive, put in a new one, and the system rebuilds itself again. Now, in the past, I used external towers with so-called port multipliers. That means you had five drives and one cable going to the computer, and that can be USB 3 or external SATA. The nice thing about it is you have top speed, which now actually we also have with the Drobos and, of course, the Synologies. But when we started out, a SATA was actually the fastest way to get your drives working. But a lot of things changed since then. The disadvantage was that if, for example, a 4 terabyte drive was full, we had to replace it with a 6 terabyte drive. And copying that amount of data takes a long time. So every time you have downtime when you have to upgrade your drives, or when, when you want to change something over, or when a drive fails, that's terrible, because then you have only one backup left and, of course, one external. But you have one backup left in your studio, and you have to copy everything from the backup, to the new drive and trust me that's a little bit of a terrifying issue because if at that moment also your backup fails because you know disaster and no <laughs> i didn't want to do that anymore so the nas system works great because now you have those several drives which are actually built for safety and now also with the dust system so the direct attached storage from um, drobo we get a really good and most of all safe but for me, the most important thing is actually ease of use. So if I need to replace a drive, simply take it out, put a new drive in, and I'm done. 
So we're going to install the Drobo. So here it is. And they're so small, look at this. And it can fit five drives. And this is what we used before. So the big towers. And of course those can fit 15 drives, but look at the size of those towers. And then look at the Drobo next to it. And the noise, I already showed that in a different episode, the noise is a huge difference. The Drobo you hardly hear. Those towers are like a jet engine going off next to your computer. But hey, it worked for a long time, so they served me well. So let's install the Drobo. And done. Another big advantage, and you just saw that, no more screws. And trust me, those little screws, you had to have these flat heads. I hope you can see that on camera. And otherwise the trays wouldn't fit into the tower. So if you lose those, well, always have a little bit of stock. And the trays itself, they're pretty cool. You can close them and then lock them. But it's a tray, and so when you change your drives, you have to take the old drive out, put the new drive in, and it's just way easier to just slide them in. Or maybe I'm lazy, but I just love solutions that take little to no work. Okay, and done. They're on top of each other, and I removed one of my towers. The other one has still all the video drives, so we have to copy those over, and then also that tower can be gone. That saves a lot of space. And the only thing I have to do is go to the Drobo dashboard, and the second Drobo will show up in a moment. And there we go, that's the second Drobo. And setting up is just as easy as, well, just pressing some buttons and telling it to create a new volume. Love it. And we're done. That's all. Whether or not, that took literally less than three minutes. So, from setting it up to being able to work on it. That's great. Oh, by the way, do you want to see something really cool? Well, it's not really cool, but it's something that you have to take notice of. Now, most of you know that I'm a huge BenQ fan, right? So we recently switched over to the SW320 4K monitor. Absolutely love it. It's a beast of a monitor. There's one thing you do have to realize. And this counts for everything, by the way. It's the same on my laptop. The Dell also has a 4K screen, uh, the Retinas, 5K screens, and this will happen a lot in the future. But it's something that, well, it just looks weird. So watch this. So this is a very old shot and we took with, I believe, an iPhone 3 or whatever. And this is actually in Lightroom, fill the screen. Now let's go to one-on-one -on -one screen. Now normally it would zoom in, right? On a 4K monitor, this happens. Mm, this is the real size. So, this is full screen, and this is one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if you do that on a normal RAW file, let's say if we go to one of our models, you can actually see that this is fill the screen, and this is one-on-one. -on -one. So, when you buy a 4K monitor, Remember that, that you have a lot of pixels. Now, one very simple trick, of course, is to zoom into 200%. Because, well, with that many pixels, you can literally zoom up to 200%. And that's a trick I actually use during retouching on the laptop. Because it's a smaller screen, I just zoom into 200%, and it looks just as sharp as on a normal screen, 100%. But I still wanted to show you. Okay, one quick final tip on the Drobo. If you use two, three, or even more, make sure you give them all a different name. So in my case, photography and video. Because otherwise they're all called Drobo and you know that at one point disaster is gonna happen when you create, for example, backup plans. So both name them differently. It was a really interesting talk with Sony. We talked about trade shows we're gonna do for them and some stuff for the ambassador program. And very soon we're going to be testing the A9. Now I could have had the A9 a little bit earlier but then you are very limited in time like you can have it for two or three hours and I want to do a proper review of the A9 because in my opinion that's going to be absolutely the best camera in the world at the moment and I want it a little bit longer so probably within the next two or three weeks you can expect us to get an A9 for a proper review. Now in between we got some mail in and as you remembered before, I was testing the ref power on the Dell to see how long it will keep the Dell running. And that was about two and a half hours, a little bit over. And now we actually got the Dell Power Companion in. And although it is less in wattage, 
So the rev power is 27,500 from the top of my head or 28,000. And this one is only 18. I hope this one has a little bit more, how do you call it? It's a little bit more tuned for the Dell. So let's see if this one can keep the Dell up for at least two hours. And this is actually the unit itself. <laughs> the weird thing is, and I'm very sorry, but I'm really picky with this. Look at this. It's all shiny and shiny. This will be scratched within weeks. And I don't get it. When you design something that's been used a lot, don't you want it to stay pristine and nice? And why this kind of material? So, but overall, in the end, it's just that the stuff works, right? So we're gonna load this up, uh, charge it up, sorry. And then tomorrow we're gonna test it on the Dell and see how long it will stay up. I hope it's longer than with the ref power. And on the other end, we now have two solutions to keep the Dell running. Great. Okay, both robots are now connected and on full speed. And this is something I want to address in the vlog because this might be a tip for all you Drobo users out there. Now the new Drobo 5C is actually connected via a USB-C cable. Now don't try to connect it to USB-C, put it in a USB 3 port. Now if you experience transfers below 100 megabytes, so for example 25, don't stress. I had the same problem just now. The thing that you have to do is take out the USB-C cable, flip it over, press it back in, and now you're on full speed. If you have a Drobo at home and you didn't check this, please do, because it makes the difference between USB 2 speed or USB 3. So the USB-C cable, take it out of the Drobo, flip it upside down, put it back in, and you're on full speed. And we can repl replicate the problem here if we turn it around again, it's slow. Turn it around the other side and it's fast. So I hope this helps you guys out if you have a Drobo at home. Okay, and we can daisy our switching our face amount to another monitor. Because in the studio we have this big TV boy, which we always use for tethered shooting. So during the workshops the students can actually see what we're shooting. And up until now there was a 180p monitor. Now we're going to switch to 4K. That means that now we can literally mimic my desktop straight on the monitor. Now you might wonder how do we get 4K from that computer over there? Very simple, we use Chromecast and then the Ultra version because that one supports 4K. You do have to connect them to the wired network, but that's no problem, we have wires over there. Guys, that was Behind the Closed Doors for today and I hope that little trick from the Drobo does help somebody out. I'm now going to edit the vlog, upload it, you guys subscribe to our channel, leave comments below, share it and of course, well, ask whatever you want for a future episode. Tomorrow we have the Photics Roadshow in our studio, so that's going to be a really interesting one. And I want to show you one thing, this is what I really like. So this is the power brick for the Dell, actually the, the extra battery, and it charges with the normal charger from the Dell, then it goes into the battery pack and from the battery pack into your laptop. So that means that you don't have to charge the battery pack separate from your laptop. You can just connect them together and if you don't have any mains, you only use the battery. Now, that's smart.